Welcome back everyone, Patrick here and moving on to another factoring by decomposition video. We got to factor each of these quadratics here if it is possible. Now, just want to mention in this particular video, there's going to be lots of carryover from the previous video. So hopefully you're watching this on the website following everything in order. If you're not, if you just ran into this on YouTube, you can go to the description box. There's a link that will take you to the website and then you can follow all of these videos in order. And make sure you do because lots of times, as in this video, there's going to be lots of carryover from the previous video. It's all organized in sections, so make sure you're watching it in order on the site. So, moving on here, notice that compared to the previous video, we have quadratics again, but in this particular case, notice that all of the B values here, they're negative, and then all of the C values are positive. Before, what we were working with was positive B values, positive C values, in this case, the C values are still positive, but notice the B values are going to be negative, right? So it's still going to be the exact same process, but the two numbers that we're going to be finding, the two numbers that multiply to AC and add up to B, the signs are going to be different. They're actually both going to be negative values. But let me show you what I mean by that. So we got X squared minus 9X plus 20. Now, what's the first step with factoring? can we take out a greatest common factor? And in this case, notice we got a one, we got a negative nine and a 20, so we can't take out any constants. And then we have an X, an X, but then there's no X variable over here. Okay, so we can't take out any variables. So there's no greatest common factor we could take out. So now let's see if we could factor this with decomposition. So notice the A value is one, the B value is negative nine, the C value is positive 20. So first step, we write out the A, B, and C. Then what's the A, C value, meaning what's A times the C value, one times 20 gives us 20. So then what we gotta do, we gotta figure out two numbers that are multiplying to that A, C value of 20, and then adding up to that B value, in this case, of negative nine. And Whenever you have a positive C value, or a positive, sorry, A C value, and then a negative B value, these two numbers, they're always going to be both negative, right? Because we need two numbers that are gonna add up to negative, a negative value, but then multiply to a positive value. And that can only happen with two negative numbers. If you have a positive and a negative, that can add up to a negative, but then a positive times a negative would give us a negative value, right? So it has to be neg two negative values here that you're gonna get. So in this particular case, whenever you have a negative B value, a positive C value, and you're doing decomposition, these two numbers here that you're finding are always gonna be two negative numbers. And if you try it out, try the different factors, it's actually gonna be negative five and negative four. Right, because notice negative five times negative four gives us positive 20. Negative five plus negative four, the plus and minus, those turn into a minus. Negative five minus four gives us negative nine, which is what we're looking for. Right, so in this particular case, the two numbers are negative. In the previous video, when you had a positive B value, positive C value, these two numbers were positive. In this particular case, both the numbers are gonna be negative. So we found the two numbers, but the same process applies. We're just going to decompose that B value to those two numbers. And then you do the same thing, you factor by grouping. So from these two, you could take out an X, so you'd have X minus five. And then here, whenever this value is negative, you're always taking out a negative value. In the previous video, both of these were positive, so we were taking out a positive value. In this case, you got to take out a negative. So we got negative 4, 20. So notice from that we could take out a negative 4 from both of those. And then if we divide both of these by negative 4 to see what's left inside the bracket, notice we'd just be left with an x. Positive 20 divided by negative 4 would give us negative 5, like that. Right? If we take that negative 4, redistribute it, in the bracket, negative four times x gives us negative four x, negative four times negative five would give us positive 20. 
And then a further check, as I mentioned before, those two brackets should always be the same if you're doing this correctly. So we could take out both of those brackets and then we're left with an X minus four. All right, so that's what this factors to. Now, as I've mentioned before, whenever you got an A value of one, like in this case, like in all of these cases here. In this case, we're gonna be able to take out a greatest common factor, which is gonna leave us with an A value of one. But for this entire section, we're gonna be dealing with an A value of one. Um, and whenever the A value is one, and you find those two numbers, which was negative five, negative four, that multiply to AC and add up to B, those are gonna be the two numbers that are gonna be in the factor. I mentioned this in the previous video as well. So it's a shortcut that you could use whenever the A value is one. You don't have to necessarily do all of this work over here, but that only happens when the A value is one. When the A value is not gonna be one, as we're gonna cover in a future section, then you can't just take those two numbers and put them here. It's not gonna work out like that. Then you're gonna have to do this whole process. So what I recommend doing is doing the full process decomposing that B value, factoring by grouping in order to get comfortable with the process for when you do it um, with those quadratics where that A value is not going to be one, right? So whichever way you do it, X minus five, X minus four, that is the answer. Let's move on to the next one. So we got um, X squared minus three X plus six like that, so the A value is one, the B value is negative three, the C value is positive six. Then what's the AC value? Positive six, so we gotta find two numbers that multiply to six, add up to negative three, like that. And if you try out numbers, there's actually not gonna be any. This is actually one of those not possible um, scenarios because Okay, if we take factors of negative six, they gotta be negative factors. Notice negative six and negative one. Negative six times negative one gives us positive six, but then negative six plus negative one would give us negative seven. It doesn't give us that negative three. Or if we try maybe negative three and negative two, negative three minus two would give us negative five. It doesn't give us that negative three. There's no two integers that are gonna work out over here. So because you can't find anything here, in this case, it's not possible to factor this. All right, let's move on to the third one, x squared minus seven x plus six. I keep actually forgetting to mention this, should have mentioned it in part B as well. First thing you always check for, can you take out a greatest common factor? One, negative seven, six, no numbers you could take out, and then we have X variables in the first two, but no X variable there. So we can't take anything out in terms of the variables. So there's no greatest common factor we could take out. So let's go into decomposition, the method of decomposition. So write out the A, B, and C. Then what's the AC value? It's six, right? Six times one. Find two numbers that multiply to six and add up to negative seven, add up to that B value. And in this particular case, uh, it's gonna be negative six and negative one, right? Negative six times negative one gives us positive six. Negative six plus negative one is like negative six minus one, which would give us negative seven. So those are the two numbers here. Now, because the A value is one, we know that it's the factors are just basically gonna be those two numbers. It's gonna be the final answer, but Let's do the full process of decomposing that um, B value into negative six X minus one X. From these two, you could take out an X. And then from these two, we got negative X plus six. So notice that can't take out any numbers because there's a one in front here, negative one. Because there's a negative here, you wanna take out a negative one then. So we take out a negative one from these two, 
And then when we do that, what would we be left with? Well, if we divide this by negative one, we'd be left with the x. When we divide positive six by negative one, we'd be left with a minus six like that, right? Taking out a negative one here to create this bracket, and then notice then the brackets are the same. So we could then take out that binomial common factor. And again, if you wanna check your answer, if you run into something like this, you could check your answer, making sure you factored correctly here. Negative one times X gives us negative X, negative one times negative six would give us positive six. So then we could take out that bracket and we're left with X minus one as expected over here. Okay, so we end up with x minus 6, x minus 1. Then moving on to part D. So x squared minus uh, 10x plus 25. First thing to always look for, greatest common factor. Can't take out anything in terms of the numbers, 1, negative 10, and 25 can't take out anything in terms of the variables because there's no variable in the C values. That's always the first thing to check for. So let's try decomposition. We got an A value of one, a B value of negative 10, and then a C value of positive 25. Then what's the next step? What's the AC value? Multiply these two, 25 times one would give us 25. And then find two numbers that multiply to the AC value of 25 and then add up to the B value of negative 10, like that. If you try a couple of factors, what are they gonna be? Negative five and negative five, right? This is actually a cool one because it's gonna be a perfect square trinomial, meaning that these two numbers are the same. And because the A value is one, we already know that we're gonna end up with X minus five times X minus five right, which is x minus five squared. That's a perfect square trinomial where the factor here is the same and then it's just squared. And that happens with an a value of one when these two numbers here are gonna be the same, All right? So this is gonna be the final answer, but let's show the work fully. So we would decompose that b value into those two values we found. We could take out an X from the first two. Then from these two, negative five, 25, we could take out a negative five. Whenever this is negative, you're always taking out a negative number. Whether it's a negative one that we took out in the previous uh, example, here it's gonna be a negative five. So we'd be left with X, 25 divided by negative five would give us negative five. Then we could take out an X minus five. What are we left with? x minus five, again. x minus five times x minus five gives us x minus five squared. All right, so that was a pretty cool one because both of those factors were the same. Usually that's not gonna happen for the majority of the cases, um, but it's possible that you could run into something like that. And then we got uh, finally two x squared, the last one, minus 22x plus 36. Now, first thing we check for, greatest common factor. In this particular case, notice we could take out a two from everything. So we'd be left with that right there. And then what I recommend doing, as I mentioned, or as I showed in previous videos, once you could take out a greatest common factor, let's forget about it. And then let's just work with that remaining quadratic right there. So let's forget about all of this. Pretend that this is the only question that you got. And then you just follow the same process. Uh, A value is one, B value is negative 11, C value is positive 18, the AC value is positive 18. So what two numbers multiply to that AC value and add up to that B value like that? Notice it's gonna be negative nine negative two, negative nine, negative two, right? Negative nine times negative two gives us positive 18. Negative nine plus negative two gives us negative 11. So what we do, decompose that B value to both of those numbers we found. 
Then you factor by grouping, you take out an x, then you can take out a negative two. And then as expected, that bracket should be the same. And then you're left with an x minus two. Okay, so this bracket here factors into those two brackets. And I mentioned this in a previous video as well, but forgot to mention it in this one so far. If you have time on a test, what you could do is you could take your answers and then you could just expand them. See if you get that original expression because remember expanding is the opposite of factoring. So if we factor, well, we could just take our answer and then expand it and make sure that we get the original expression. When we do that in this case, x times x is x squared, x times negative two is negative two x, negative nine x, positive 18. These are like terms. So notice we end up with that expression that we were factoring. And then to take it further, if you want to further check to get the original, original expression, you can redistribute that two into the bracket, two x squared, this times two is negative 22 x, this times two would give us 36. So we end up with that same expression. Right, so you could take all of these, expand them to see if you get that original expression as a final check. Okay, so in this particular case, we took out the two initially, and then this remaining bracket factored into those two brackets right there. All right, so that ends up being the final answer. So first thing to check for always, can you take out a greatest common factor? And then once you do that, the remaining bracket, you could see if you can factor that with decomposition.